You can go on. Okay, so welcome everybody to this session. So this session is dedicated to the winner of the Best Process Mining PhD Award for 2020. Um, so the session will go uh, with a presentation by the winner of the prize. Uh, and then there will be the possibility of uh, uh, answering questions, which will be, I think, especially important in a session like this, because you, as a, especially as a student, uh, I hope that you will be able to get uh, all the insights you can from a person who had the same experience that you are currently in, and that uh, concluded this experience with a uh, very exceptional result. Um, so before talking about the, the, the winner, let me just uh, tell a little bit about uh, uh, what is this activity. So I am one of the members of the IEEE Task Force for, uh, for Process Mining, uh, of the steering committee of that. And we have uh, various activities, as many of you know, uh, running the ICPM conference is, uh, is, is one of the most important. And as part of, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, working about uh, uh, how to disseminate the research results to the community and also beyond the community, uh, it's important for us to check what are the best results obtained by young researchers in the, in the field. And so a um, couple of years ago, uh, together with the, the starting of the conference, we decided also to uh, create an award for the for the best uh, PhD dissertation. So uh, this is an activity that uh, will run throughout the years. I'm currently chairing this activity within uh, the steering committee. And uh, so we created a, a panel of experts. You can consult uh, all the panel on the, on the web. We mixed up uh, uh, young people who got uh, very exceptional results in their own thesis together with more experienced researchers, so as to reflect uh, all the different uh, flavors of the community, so to say. Uh, theses were uh, reviewed by uh, different experts of the panel. Uh, we asked these experts to not only judge the quality of the thesis, but also try to measure the current and the potential impact of the thesis within the academic community but also uh, looking outwards, uh, the potential impact for adoption in the industry. Um, so trying really to have a 360 degrees uh, overview of, of the quality of the thesis. Um, this was uh, the first phase of the award. In the second phase, we shortlisted. In this case, we shortlisted two theses. Uh, we had an oral discussion with the, with the students or the former students actually. Uh, and then based on, uh, on the outcome of the discussion, the question answering, and obviously, uh, most importantly, the reviews that we collected in the first phase, we determined the winner for this year. The winner is uh, Zizi Lu. So let me congratulate and let's have all like a virtual applause for her. So let me say a few words why Zizi is uh, really an exceptional example of uh, uh, how you can get uh, in the like, relatively short period of, uh, of a PhD, results that can really have an impact uh, into, the, into the community. So first of all, about the topic. So you know that in process mining, we have this 80-20 uh, problem. So we have that uh, when process mining uh, is applied in reality, 80% uh, of the time is actually spent in preparing the data. And then only 20% of the time is, uh, is employed to really use all the techniques that we like and that we know. Uh, sorry, just a second. Okay, and so uh, why am I telling this to you? Because uh, CC worked, uh, and we don't have uh, so many examples. I think this is now uh, being picked up by many people in the community, but uh, it's really a recent uh, evolution of the, of the process mining community. So we, uh, we, we could see a lot of results on process mining as such, but we could not see many researchers really contributing to this data preparation phase. And instead, the CC really concentrated on that part. So if, if I am in an industrial context, 
where I have to collect the data to apply process mining, and I am not sure about the quality of this data. What can I do in order to be sure that I can attack this problem and then make it possible for people to ensure that the data are of enough quality, look into patterns, try to cluster all this data that I have, trying to understand more about the labels that have been used in order to, to uh, label the events with activities, for example. And you see, so now uh, after, after CC studied this problem, we have really a repertoire of techniques that can be put into practice in order to, to help people in this data preparation phase. Uh, what has a special role here is the context, right? So the behavioral context in which uh, these data have been collected and in which uh, the company is operating. And so I hope that during the presentation, you, you will be able to see uh, on the one end the breadth of the, of the contribution that CC did. On the other hand, obviously, this is something that you always need to have in a PhD thesis, also the depth of some of the results she achieved. Uh, for process mining, it's always difficult to balance between uh, like foundational contributions and then experimental validation. And so I also think that uh, uh, CC's example really shows how you can balance these two aspects. So having really genuinely novel idea that can be developed into, into full-fledged techniques. Uh, with that, I close my introduction. I congratulate again uh, Zizi, and I hope you will have a wonderful time with us uh, for the rest of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for this very, very nice work. Um, uh, I don't know what to say. Let me see how I can share my slides. Uh, this one. Can you see my slide? Yes, whenever you are ready, you can start. So um, thank you uh, for this incredible award. Um, I never thought I would want it, but when you send this email, you really, really uh, rocked my world. Um, uh, I will put it in my office wall, of course. Um, uh, also, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present my work here. Uh, I'm very nervous, but you can also see that I'm very excited and honored and happy to present my, uh, my work. Uh, I hope it uh, also will be an uh, enjoyable time. Um, so uh, also uh, nice that now your supervisors have to listen to you in this talk. <laughs> so, but I, what I want to say is thank you, Will. Um, thank you, Will from the house. Thank you, Dirk Fackman. So uh, my uh, um, supervisors, Without you, uh, this thesis would not have existed. Uh, without you, I've not won this award. award. Um, so thank you again. Also my uh, thesis committee members, uh, the people from TUE team, um, uh, the jury, of course, the SPM, SPM organizational team, um, all the incredible research visits and collaboration I had, uh, the DISCO team, which I use very often in my case studies, the Salonas team, where I had uh, um, the honor to work with too. And of course now um, I'm in the UU team, uh, my current uh, um, team members and my family and my friends. So, so just, just thank you, thank you for everything. Um, having that said, I'm going into now into the content of today. So I will spend the first 10 minutes to introduce, explain a little bit the research question, um, and then uh, go into approaches and results. Um, finally, uh, when we had a little bit, uh, so I asked Claudio, uh, what should I talk about? So he was also, one thing stuck with me was why process mining? So I would like to also maybe say a few words from my view and uh, closing the presentation with that. Uh, so let's start. Um, uh, so this is a, a big data and process mining era, I will call it. And I'm going to borrow a few slides from Will. Um, so as individuals, we are generating a lot of data. So current, when we're buying coffee, when we are making phone calls, uh, when we're getting a speed ticket, um, when we get the emails, when we take a train, especially now when we take all these online video lectures, uh, also watching this uh, video, as individuals, we are generating a lot of data. 
And as companies, we also are generating a lot of data. So the companies are now using ERP systems, different devices to manage their sales orders, purchase orders, financial, um, their customers uh, going through how their projects are organized. Um, so as companies, you're, you could see that they are generating a lot of data too. Uh, and with the industrial uh, internet of things coming up, uh, you will see all the, uh, the, the, the wireless uh, devices, the, the intelligent devices, uh, the driverless cars, that's all managed and linked and connected, um, generating all different data, how they are executing their part of the process. So all these are extremely fascinating to me that all these events um, are connected, are there and can be analyzed. And what made me made very clear to me is this picture from Will, how we positioned and how we linked process mining to the rest. So here we have the world excluding all this uh, data. So we have processes, uh, events uh, uh, being excluded through interaction with different devices and systems. And through these interactions, the event data get recorded. On the other hand, we have process models that could be used to describe and analyze the systems. Uh, now the process mining is trying to bridge these two. So we have the event data where we can discover process models and do compliance, conformance checking and enhance the models. And the challenge now that the big data brings us is this all this loosely connected data and loosely connected events. So this is the first challenge I was facing when I, when I was um, doing my PhD and would really like to be able to handle and make use of this loosely connected data. On the other hand, we have event data qualities issues. So um, uh, it, you, we can compare this to a analogy of the, so the scan of doctors, uh, when it's of low value, it's very difficult to use. Whereas if it's high value, then the doctor can make very accurate uh, diagnostics. So for us, it's the same. When we have event data, we don't know about the quality. It's difficult and it's going to impact the results we have. Whereas if we have high quality event data, we can derive and make very accurate uh, diagnostics analysis. So um, there's also this phrase, garbage in, garbage out. So how do we handle that? Let's go into an example. So let's assume that we have an event log of six patients here. So every, um, this line is a trace, every rectangle is an event. So we have first patient going through this process. So let's assume we have this log and we do not know the quality of this log. How do we start? Where do we start? So we could, for example, assume that um, it's a, the log is trustworthy and we can uh, discover model as is. So basically we can apply a discovery algorithm and get a model here. But when we study this, we could also think of, uh, maybe reflect on this and thought, um, maybe we, we, we need to change our assumption. Maybe um, the log contains different variants. So if it's that that's the case, we can apply, for example, clustering. Should we apply clustering algorithm and then discover, for example, different uh, a set of models from this log? And uh, when we look into more detail, maybe there are um, uh, duplicated labels in the process. So for example, there are doctor appointments excluded before the surgery. So it could be pre-surgery doctor appointment and there might be doctor appointment after the surgery. So that's after uh, post uh, surgery doctor appointment. And maybe there are untrustworthy events in the log or there might be deviations in the log because duplicated uh, recordings. So uh, when we have this refined or detected, we can discover a model again, which gives a very different uh, accurate model. We can help the discovery algorithm to find more accurate representations. So this brings me to the second challenge. Uh, so we will like to handle the event data of unknown quality. Um, to help the analysts to explore the data. So uh, to give an overview now, so um, uh, this example gives a, uh, the, the picture how we, how we process this uh, 
um, pre-analysis, uh, pre-processing steps. So given a log, how do we uh, assess the quality of the log? Should we apply clustering? Should we refine the log? Should we do that again and discover a model or should we detect patterns? Um, so this uh, creates a view of the research questions that I want to look into. So now uh, let's go through the projects and results. Um, so uh, using that, um, uh, I'm, uh, I followed and adapted a methodology of process mining. With the first step, we want to assess the quality and explore the rock. And once we know certain issues we want to fix, we could uh, apply data pre-processing steps and going back uh, iteratively, uh, each time creating a different view of the log, which can be used for discovery and conform checking, for example. So in my thesis, I have worked on these five different components, the quality assessment, the pattern det detection, the trace clustering, label refinement, and deviation detection. So you can place this in these different phases of the methodology. Now, uh, what's shared uh, among uh, between these different approaches is the core idea of matching events. So um, each of these different approaches draws the, uh, has the essential idea that we want to match similar and dissimilar behavior uh, using event contexts. So um, uh, the basic idea is that when the event occurs in similar contexts, we can consider this as similar behavior, whereas otherwise it, it will consider as different, uh, dissimilar behavior. And this could be used, for example, very easily for trace clustering and uh, label refinement, deviation detection, and pattern detection. And uh, so we investigated uh, two different ways of event matching, the local and the global ones. So I will first go into the local event matching, the idea of local similarity, um, which we said it's the patterns and the pattern detection, and then later explaining the global event matching. So what we consider as local log patterns, um, we prefer to have simple log patterns. There have been existing uh, works, very nice works on this. Uh, so for example, log, uh, sorry, local process models, so LPM, um, they are using uh, PetriNet. Uh, in our case for pre-processing, we were thinking we might prefer simpler. So we designed this, um, uh, we proposed this direct acyclic graph, so partial order uh, of nodes, um, where the nodes are the labeled activities. So the nodes are labeled with activities and two type of relationship, the direct causes and the eventually causes. So with these two, we could also derive the concurrences between, our, uh, between the nodes. And we propose a, a, a concept that called core activity. Basically, this is the anchor of the um, what, what you what we will like to investigate, and the rest is context. So in this case, we are investigating the injury occurred in this context. Um, so uh, using this, we have proposed different ways to semi-supervisedly detect the patterns and explore this. Uh, and this is how we proposed it. Uh, so let's say we have a, a log and traditionally we will discover a model uh, and we, we uh, obtain this model here. So when we look into the model, we might see there are chaotic activities in the model. So we could use this as our starting point. Uh, so in our uh, log pattern explorer approach, we visualize the log here. So each instance are visualized as a graph. And now you can use the core activity. Uh, so the chaotic activity ask the core activity to detect the patterns. Um, so here we detect a few patterns. Uh, we could see how the green activity are occurring in the, in the context and the yellow ones, for example. And then you can select one of these patterns to um, find the execution instance in the log. So you will be highlighted in the log and see the additional context of this log pattern. And when you see that, you could extend this pattern again and explore again, and extend again, modify it, uh, uh, change it. So uh, this is on the one hand, you could also select other patterns and explore, modify, explore again. And you, through this process, uh, you might find uh, some 
uh, activities to be truly uh, chaotic or not, you could find answer for that. Or you could find maybe there are uh, different process variants or even long, uh, probabilistic dependencies between different activities. So we implement this um, in the uh, prompt plugin. Uh, here you see you see the GUI of this plugin. So on the left hand side you have the traces visualizers. So each uh, rectangle, each tail is an event. You see here the event. So you can click on this event um, and extract a pattern by applying one of the detectors, and a set of patterns will be returned here with statistical informations. So, and then you can select one of the patterns you are interested in and highlight that in the, in the GUI again. So in the fish, log visualization again. And uh, of course you can extend this pattern by ex, uh, selecting more tails and then this will be uh, extracted again as pattern and can be explored again. So this was the tool. Uh, we apply this to um, uh, independently on two case studies. Here's some results on one case study. On the, uh, so we apply this on BKI challenge 2012. Um, here is one pattern. So the this is handling the the, the uh, application uh, preceded by uh, partial submitted. So about 4,700 cases follow this pattern. When we extend this pattern with a decline, uh, there are about 3,200 cases that follows that extended pattern. However, when we extend this pattern with um, uh, accept. Uh, the order uh, accept the application, there's only 12%. So there was only 560 uh, cases that follows this pattern. So this uh, way we could help detecting long-term probabilistic dependencies. This allows us to explore uh, this kind of patterns and uh, obtain very interesting results through this. So uh, that was the uh, local matching. So the log pattern explore. On the other hand, uh, we could match events globally. So between two traces, we match all the events. And this is another uh, core cool idea that's used through the uh, thesis. So uh, again, uh, we have here the first trace and the second trace. And we are, for example, matching the doctor. So the first uh, is we also match uh, the events through the, the close neighbors, so Kenyan neighbors. And then we match, for example, this doctor to this because the neighbors are very similar. But we also calculate between every two pairs, the distances. So then this two has um, distance of zero because they are preceded and uh, succeeded by the same pair. So this allows us to create a global mapping uh, uh, globally and assess the similarity between two traces uh, globally too. So we use that um, for, for example, uh, calculating the aggregated uh, representation of the two traces of traces, and do, for example, hierarchical clustering. So here, once uh, so each mapping will have a cost. The cost can be used to uh, do uh, to perform hierarchical clustering, and we could, for example, merge um, based on the mapping. We can merge the similar events together to calculate the higher higher uh, abstracted representation of this exclusion. So um, this can be done iteratively between every two traces. And here we implement it in a tool called L2Me. Uh, so log to model explore. And then on the left-hand side, you will see the clusters. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the models you discover. Uh, and of course, you could use this for label refinements because you uh, match the events globally uh, and you have the events uh, the similarities through the traces. So this is an experiment with it using uh, generated models. So here you see the model that's generated uh, for experiments where we have four these different transitions uh, assigned with the same label, so B. So this is mimicking the, the duplicated um, tasks uh, problem. And if we generate a log from this model, we have events that are labeled uh, with B, but referring to these four different uh, transitions. So in a log, we don't know that. And existing discovery, for example, 
um, treated as the same Li, and then you see here a small uh, loop uh, around it because he doesn't know how to handle this B. Uh, so if you use the, the global matching and uh, refinement threshold, then you can refine it and discover, for example, there are these four different Bs in four different stages. Um, of the process. Of course, it's not perfect. For example, here, the context between these two B are uh, extremely similar, so we could not distinguish it. Um, there are also other cases it fails, but here, this is a very example that it worked. Okay, so coming back, um, I have explained the, the local matching, the global matching, and uh, the technique were used to support these five different approaches. Uh, techniques, which then coming back to this um, methodology we were using in our thesis. So we supporting uh, assessment exploration and the data pre-processing to, uh, to close this cycle. So a summary of the results I, uh, in, in the thesis. So for the quality assessment, we propose a conceptual framework with four different templates that helps uh, to understand which way we might be able to, which technique we can use. For uh, pattern detection, we applied, uh, together with the uh, people from QUT, we applied into two distinct, uh, two independent case studies uh, and reported very novel, interesting insights. Um, in the trace clustering, we uh, um, uh, conducted an experiment of one, generated 160 logs and two case studies where it shows significant improvement uh, when uh, compared to not clustering. Um, for the label refinements, we also uh, generate 1,200 logs and models and shows uh, improvement around 65 to 85 87% of the models of the cases. So if you're interested, please have a look. Uh, and finally, um, the, the similarity and dissimilarity can be used for detecting deviations in the log without a reference model. And we um, did the experiment with that uh, using 25 logs and two case studies. It shows that um, uh, if the contexts are extremely accurate, so if the context of event is extremely accurate, uh, we could detect deviations as accurate as using a reference model. Uh, so the, the deviations, uh, when, when we detect these deviations without a reference model. Of course. So uh, this summarized the results. Uh, we implement all this in the uh, log to me, uh, to model explorer and the log pattern explorer uh, tools. Um, and of course, uh, there are limitations and future work. Uh, two of them very nicely pointed out during the, uh, the, the, the presentation to the jury. So uh, yes, global matching is extremely computational expensive. So because we are computing between every two traces, the mapping, so every, the, the pairs of events. That's uh, uh, so to, and to do that optimally. So it's extremely, extremely uh, difficult. Uh, so th that's why uh, we also later proposed this local matching, which allows us to just explore the, the similarity and similarity using the core uh, activities and not uh, the entire traces. Uh, whereas the local matching actually requires a lot of manual exploration through the, uh, uh, with the pattern. So you have to self now decide what's interesting or not. Um, when it leads to uh, uh, um, probabilistic dependencies and so on. But I think um, with now we understand much better how this probabilistic dependencies forms, we can also detect them automatically. Um, so, and many more, uh, if you are interested in, please have a look uh, to the thesis. And if, uh, of course, don't hesitate to contact me, okay. So uh, this brings to uh, my summary. Um, so uh, all these approaches we have implemented, uh, conduct experiments and case studies and uh, build a tool for. So uh, given a log, you can now assess the qualities. You, if you want to close through, you can apply closed stream. You can detect deviations. You can refine the logs uh, to discover more accurate models, or you can detect patterns to explore again. Uh, so uh, I was also asked to give a significance of potential 
uh, which brings me back to my challenges. So I was, I want, we wanted to support low quality locks and uh, I think we found a way uh, and we want to support partial order uh, traces and locks. So the loosely connected events. So all the techniques in this thesis is supporting that. So um, I have also the uh, um, opportunity and uh, the, the, um, the chances to work on other very interesting topics, which is now fully included in the thesis. So we were able to work on a PM square methodology for conducting process mining in the field. Uh, we, uh, I worked on the artifact centric process discovery. So discovering models from ERP systems. Uh, we were able to analyze uh, with the NIC um, uh, the precision measures uh, with a very uh, interesting axioms um, and the partial order alignment. Uh, so uh, if you are interested in this topic too, then also don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, so with that, I would like to um, close the content of the thesis and the PhD and coming to uh, the, the point of why process mining. So I was asking Claudia, oh, sorry, Claudio, um, Terribly. I was always afraid to do that. Uh, I was asking Claudio for tips um, uh, how to give uh, a keynote at this uh, um, venue because I was I thought I was just giving a talk about my PhD. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, he asked this why process mining, which really um, tricked me because I always find process mining so fascinating. And I was trying to formulate my own words, but it's, it's difficult. So I'm going to borrow Will's uh, slide again. <laughs> so I, I'm missing it. So um, uh, for me, process mining really acts uh, as the missing link. Um, so we have uh, followed courses in data science, um, data mining, data visualization. For me, that's on that hand, they are very focused. So of course they are very good uh, in focusing on one task. For example, providing a label, providing um, a prediction, uh, do a clustering. So for me, uh, they, they are like one transition in the patronet, whereas the process science, they are using theory, theory to connect different tasks. Um, and process mining links these two to use the data to create infinite amount of fields um, and to uh, provide the relationships and links between these different tasks. So that was extremely fascinating for me. And with now the big data coming, so all the events are recorded through all these different kinds of systems, you could actually connect, create or discover infinite amount of models, right? So you could discover any type of models you want, creating any fields you want, and uh, with all these different data sets. Um, so I was trying to draw a graph for that, but <laughs> so I, I, did, I wasn't able to do that with the time. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm listing here. So you can create infinite number of valuable perspectives and models and fields. So of course, I love the um, neat and mathematical problem of giving a perfect walk. How do we discover the perfect model? But on this hand, so now we are giving this all these different logs, all these uh, connected logs and events, uh, and with this um, in the industry for all these different purposes and for people. Um, so we could actually discover descriptive models. So what's what, what we are doing. So we could use that for communication, for um, explaining how the processes are executed. But we are also starting to discover the predictive process models the uh, stochastic process models, the causal process models explaining causality, the queuing process models that explain the performance and resource models, how that are linked to each other, uh, process simulation models, which is even commercialized. Um, and uh, so the, given a log, you can just discover a simulation model that simulates the log for you. You could even build execution model that helps uh, automate the process like now with the robotic process automation models. And you could create all these different models for different people 
So they are interested in all different kinds. When you're talking to, for example, data engineers, they are interested in how data changes through the process. When you talk to uh, high level managers, they, they want to high level processes. And when you talk to uh, system admins, they want to have low level processes. Uh, patients want to see the healthcare patient pathway through their perspective, but you could also change the perspective and then show um, this incredible treatment process to train young doctors or uh, the tech workarounds for nurses. So um, the, the question then lies, which type of model should we discover for which group of people and how do we do that? And how do we evaluate all these different type of models? Right? So, and this is not a fiction, this is happening. And you will hear all these fascinating stories in, the, in this conference and the conference to come. So talk to people, um, uh, hear their stories, see, find out what you are interested in. Uh, go ahead. I, I really wish you a very nice uh, PhD. Uh, this brings to my closing. Uh, um, uh, so I would uh, never dare to tell you how you should do your PhD. Um, so uh, but I, for my, this was a, a very nice saying in Chinese. I don't know how to translate this in good English. So, but it basically says that, um, so walking this road, I don't see any enemies, but I only see companion and mentors. So that was a great journey for me. Uh, with this, I would like to close my presentation. Um, I would like to thank uh, the organization team, uh, the jury, my supervisors, the audience too. Uh, I hope you enjoy this talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Xizi. It was very, very well done. Uh, so uh, also the, la the last part I think was very insightful in more general terms. Uh, if I can only pick up uh, one suggestion that you gave uh, is the very last slide. So we know that we are operating in a very competitive research environment, but we should leave this in a constructive way. So, so this is also the advice I want to give to, to students entering the, the field, right? Before giving the floor to, to question answers, I, I also want to, to mention, okay, I'm a little bit uh, spoiling, but we already spoiled, uh, right, the, the award uh, ceremony session, because uh, now people know that, that you are the winner this year. I also want to mention the runner-up, which is uh, Farbod Taimuri. He also did a very excellent thesis uh, working on uh, uh, this very important and timely field of conformance checking and finding alignments. And so he's also an exceptional example that uh, deserves to be mentioned also now. Also so that uh, the PhD students that are attending now can have two examples of, I have to say, also two very different theses in terms of the way they have been uh, uh, developed and written. So this also helps uh, towards diversity, right? Having two examples that can provide uh, like two models of what you 